Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. And in today's video, we are going to take a look at using nodes in Maya. This is a bit of a different video from us as it explains more of a fundamental view of how Maya works. This is going to be useful no matter what you're really doing in Maya. So let's get into it. So in Maya, we are now going to be looking through the node editor. You can find that under window and then you take the node editor from here and just dock it down. I've also removed the animation menu as well because we don't need that. Now, this video is more of a foundational video, which means this applies to all skill levels. I've seen very advanced artists who don't understand this and I've seen beginner artists who would really benefit from this as well. We are looking into how nodes really work in Maya. Everything in Maya is node-based and you might've heard that before, but now we're gonna take a look at what this actually means. So we're gonna be using the outliner and we are gonna be making a simple cube. So with a cube, you can see that in the outliner, we just have, it just says P cube one. And that's very nice and easy for the outliner. But if you go under the node editor, you can see that we have more data. Currently we have three nodes. And these nodes represent different parts of the model or how the data is represented. The first one is more of an, of like a beginner node. This is how I like to think about it. This has been created right in the beginning when you make a primitive. And this determines what the primitive looks like. So if we go to the attribute editor, we can now access the information from the node. So now you can see that we have the width and the height and the depth. Little tip as well, if you want to change these without actually scrubbing here, you can just hold down the control key and left mouse button to get like nice little numerical or incremental numbers. So this is where we can change the height, we can change the depth. We're really just changing the segments right here. Nothing special at all. And then we have the shape node. The shape node is telling Maya how is the cube actually gonna be drawn. Every single 3D object in Maya will have a shape node. So this is where it tells the viewport and the render engine how it's gonna draw the object. For instance, if you go on Arnold, we can now see that we have different options. Is this gonna be a poly mesh? Is it gonna be a mesh light? Is it gonna cast shadows? And a bunch more render specific options. Then we have a transform node. The transform node is, is a bit different in the sense that this determines where the it actually lives. So this determines the transformation, the rotation and the scale of it. So once we have, once we understand that we have these nodes, everything in Maya becomes a bit easier to understand. You, you have a shape node and you have a transform node for everything. And if you delete history, you will not have this P cube anymore or this poly cube one anymore, which means if you import an object, you're not going to see this. So let's just delete history real quick and you can see what happens. Then this is gone. And if you want to change segments later on, then you just have to delete these over again. So if we just restart this and then we make another cube, Let's do a quick example. So now we, we just have the same cube as before. And now we want to add a bevel to this. And we can now see if we just bring this back like this, that there is now a bevel node attached to this. The reason we're showing this to solve with a simple bevel is that you can now understand a little bit better how the data is actually connected in Maya. Unlike some other software like Max and Blender, we have more stacks. Maya doesn't work that way. We don't really have a stack, which means that stuff is connected like this. If we add another bevel to it, you can see that we will have another bevel node to it. So we can start to rename these and keep this very simple. So we can call this top bevel and we can call this bottom bevel. And no matter when you're opening the scene up, you can always access this. So if you want to go into the top bevel and you want to change the segments, you can do that go to the bottom bevel and change the segments, you can do that. And you might start to see some advantages to Maya being node-based now, because now you can start to see uh, some advantages in terms of being procedural. You can now do some cool stuff with procedural modeling, but this is a bit <laughs> too stylized in terms of an example. Like this is very a very tutorial example where we're showing how to make a cube and using only specific nodes we will um, will create the model. This doesn't necessarily translate to production methods when you're when you're doing modeling, for example. For some specific kinds, you might use this, but in reality, for the mass majority, you're not going to be using this. But this is still valid in order to understand how the data actually flows. So where does this not 
become valid? Where does this become messy? Well, like with everything in uh, in Maya, or if you have flexibility, you also have more complexity. And this becomes very apparent once we start to actually model something. So let's select a single face and let's do an extrusion. Just hold on the shift key and drag it out. You see now, see now we have an extrusion. Awesome. Let's do another one. And let's do another one. And let's do another one. And you can start to see that this is going to go completely bonkers. You know, after you're not just going to keep doing extrusion after extrusion uh, like this. You could do this in a more optimized way, but just a reality of it. If you're doing any kind of real modeling, you're just going to be doing a lot of different operations to it. This could be anything from inserting an edge loop to deleting vertices, whatever you might want to do. Everything sort of leaves a node trace behind. Which is cool because that means we can delete the notes and you can now see this whole thing disappeared. But it also means that this is not practical. This is not user friendly in any way. And now we're starting to see another thing as well, which is if we go to the channel box, just hit control A and you go down here under inputs, you can now see this long list of, of just inputs we're seeing. And if you don't know that Maya is node based, you might think that this is some kind of stack that everything you do just en ends up in the stack. But this is not the case, they end up in they look like a stack because they're just placed the way they are, or they're just displayed the way they are. But this is showing you the, the connections of the different nodes. These are all the inputs of the mesh. And this is what you might just know as history. And when you delete history, which is shift alt D, then all these are gone and you now have a nice clean model. So if you want, just want to display it again, we click on this button here, which displays input and output. And now we're back to a regular shape node. We have a shading group and then we have a transform node. So this keeps your scenes really clean. Now, if you want to assign a material to this, we can easily do that, right mouse button, favor of material, and we're just gonna assign a Lambert. Now you can see we have a Lambert. You see the downside to this is now you've lost all the procedural nature of the modeling, but the upside is you're, you've massively sped up your scene as well, because as you start modeling or doing other actions, lighting, rigging, whatever it is, nodes take up computational space and it, it starts to get pretty sluggish sometimes. It also starts to get pretty crashy. <laughs> oh, there's that too. If you have a, if you have big scenes like this, your scene will just crash at some point. There are just too many connections and too much going on. So now we have a material, and if we want to assign, um, if we want to assign a, just a quick file node to this, you can do this by clicking here, or we can hit the Tab key in the Node Editor and hit File, and then we go to Texture, and now we have a file node. And this is again just illustrating how everything is really a node. You in some software you just kind of import your map and it's just kind of floating about in a non-specific manner in a 3D software. But in Maya, it is very much a node. Here's a file node, and then you have a place to the texture node which describes this file node. Is this is this wrapping around? Does it use a UV map? What happens to it? And then we will um, uh, import a map here. And if we now just connect this file node to our uh, shader, we will now have a color assigned to our model like this. Not the greatest UVs, but it displays you. It shows the <laughs> it shows the example where this is how you actually get stuff connected up. We have a file node now connected to a material. Next up, let's have a look at the attribute editor. So one of the reasons why I want to show you that Maya is node based is because it explains a lot of things in Maya, specifically in this case, the attribute editor. Here we have a model which has a shape node, it has a shader group, and it has a transform node. And this is exactly what you're seeing up here as well. We're now seeing the raw poly, which is a transform. The transform is always first. Then we have a shape node where we can just change it does this cast shadows, if it's primary visibility, all of that. And then we have the material. So this is always corresponding to the nodes attached to your model. This is, this, I was really confused about this when I first started using Maya, that this just seems like a collection of things. I didn't really get what this was. If they were just kind of things, properties somehow related to the model, but they're not. They're very specifically displaying the nodes attached together. And then let's look into the last example, which is how can you use this to clean up your scenes? Now, <laughs> it's it's a bit hard to see where this is a this is practical knowledge. Uh, right now, we've just been showing how data flows and essentially just delete history. But this is practical for a whole bunch of different use cases. If you're doing anything with rigging, lighting, pipeline, scene setup, even some kind of modeling, this is gonna be really helpful for you. Currently, we have a pretty clean scene. If we just delete the cube we had before, now you can see we have 
just a uh, raw poly model and we have a point light. So you assume this scene is nice and clean, but it's not. The way you can know that is if you were to display every single node in your scene, you can do that in the outliner, go into display, bag objects only, and here you can see every single node. You might've clicked this by accident and wondering what the hell happened. And now you're just restarting Maya frantically panicking. But what this is doing, it shows you every single node in the scene. Currently you're just seeing it in like a nice view, an organized view, but if you enable it, everything will be visible. And now you can see that we have a lot of junk. All of these are just junk. They're just junk nodes. These are junk, just junk file nodes. These are junk material nodes, and it might even be some bevel nodes or something left from before. So this creates really complex and nasty scenes. If you were to import this scene, this model into another scene, you would just create a crazy amount of mess. Let's say you have 10 models like this, and they're all imported into 10 rig scenes, which now all have their own things. And those are imported into animation scenes, which have their own things. You import this into a lighting scene. It just becomes a mess and your Maya scene will crash and you have no idea why it's crashing. Most likely it will be because you just have so much junk in your scene. So how do we fix this? Well, the easiest way would just be to simply just delete them. But the danger of that is that some of these might be connected to things. You don't really know what's connected or not just by looking at this. So the easiest way for me is to go up into the hypershade and then we go to edit and delete unused nodes. Now this is where actually knowing what nodes are and how they connect is useful because what does unused mean? Well, it means it's just a simple node just floating around by itself. If we do it to go in here and we just, just to graph this out, there's nothing. It's not connected to anything, which means it's unused. So by going to edit, delete unused nodes, we can now easily delete all the nodes. And we do that. And now we have a nice and clean scene. These are all nodes just need by default. My just requires this for this scene to work, but there is no junk in this scene at this moment. It can also be powerful to know that this exists as well. If we do have a lot of, uh, a lot of these nodes, for instance, if we have, we just undo this and we have, let's say this node right here, and we want to attach this to a material. We can now just take any one of these file nodes and just middle mouse button drag them into a different attribute, into a different connection. So this is a very powerful way of working as well. I do this a lot when I'm working more complex scenes where I have all my, all my file nodes here and then I can just middle mouse button drag them into different places like so. So that's really how Maya works in a very simple way. We have a, 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 like an initializing node, a beginning node, then we have a shape node, then we have a transform node for all the models. Uh, the shape node or the beginning node, the initializing node is removed the moment you delete history. All, all nodes in the attribute editor are directly connected to what actually happens to your model. And if you see under the inputs and you delete history, that is deleting and merging together the different nodes. So I really hope this here has been useful for you. If you have any more cool Maya tips like this or more of a fundamental understanding of how Maya works and want to see videos on that, let us know and we'll be more than happy to make videos on that.